Greetings all, Joseph Kursky here, along with my colleague, Kansarina Kurnia. We serve on the education industry team, supporting all of you in higher education, libraries, museums, some from K-12 education and beyond. Anywhere there's education happening, we wanna be there to support and encourage and uh, do all we can to, to make you successful with GIS. And we are so thrilled today because <laughs> When we were planning, oh, what should we do for, the, for these chats for the remainder of the year? We thought Business Analyst Web, we love Business Analyst Web. Who could we get to do that? We can get Helen Brown, our product manager for the ArcGIS Business Analyst uh, product. So Helen, thanks so much for agreeing to do this and we're so looking forward to uh, hearing what you have to share today. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, thank you everyone for joining. Uh, my name is Helen Brown again, and I'm one of the um, product managers for ArcGIS Business Analyst here at ESRI. Um, for today, I prepared a short demo and even shorter overview actually um, to get you um, better understanding the value of business analyst, when to use it, who benefits from it, what it does. And then I'm gonna jump right into the demo itself and then open it up to you for questions and answers. So business analysts can help students and those in academia make smarter and informed decisions when evaluating sites for policy programs and services to better understand who, who your policy will impact, where the needs are and how to allocate resources. There, when you think about business analysts, there are four parts to it. The first part is the data that it comes with it. Even though you can actually work with your own data. It actually comes with a basic demographic as well as um, industry data that you can, you can start using it right away. Um, secondly, you have, I'm sorry, secondly, you have, the, um, you have the ability to create maps to actually visualize that data. And then thirdly, the application includes um, analytical workflows so that you can filter, add or summarize the data to see trends and patterns. And then lastly, we have the ability to provide um, customized reports um, as well as beautiful charts and infographics that you can share with your um, stakeholders, whether it's the community or policymakers. And as some of you may know, um, the, industry that we, the industries that we serve are very wide. It includes education as well as um, private industries such as in finance and real estate but also many in public agencies and nonprofit organizations, especially um, you know, public safety and economic development and health. And in education, here are a couple of um, ways in which the application and the data can be applied. You know, it can help students use contextual information to make key policy or um, impactful decisions. And then it can also help students better understand the market for positioning your programs um, products or services and to allocate them optimally, uh, allocate the resources optimally. It can also help future policymakers see where certain populations live. For instance, you have the data to target, you know, to see where vulnerable populations live. And then we also can be used, can, the application can be used to help students see the types of businesses that are in their study area because we also partner with um, third party data licensors to be able to help you see some data that we don't, we don't provide. Um, for instance, business locations. And then um, as some of you may know, we also have public data, but we have actually engineered it for, to work with all the scales and the latest geographies that um, we internally have worked on, as well as population projections and forecasts that our internal demographers have, um, are providing. Um, so some of the data that we do, we, it, that the application comes with, unlike other software, it, it's actually tightly integrated with the capabilities. So if you have demographics data, um, you can see, you know, visual maps with it. There's consumer spending data and then our own um, tapestry segmentation. So you can see, you know, who your audience is very clearly. And the content also comes um, in 130 countries. It includes you know, um, demographic data, households, age, income, and others. So um, 
What you'll be learning today is definitely an introduction to Business Analyst. I'm going to be covering um, an orientation of the app. I'll show you how to create a study area and then to run infographics, which are very visual um, bar charts um, and um, interactive visuals that you can share with your stakeholders. And then how to add data, what type of data we, we currently provide, and then the ability to share, share what you have through story maps or just through um, with ArcGIS, through ArcGIS Online. And um, at the end of the session, I'll also be sharing um, a slide to, so that you can dive deeper into some of our videos and our help documentations as well. So with that, I am going to jump right into the demo itself. So bear with me for a second. I'm just going to switch out my screen. Okay, I'm just going to share again. Um, let me see. I'm going to move the zoom. Are you able to see this as well? I'm not sure. Yep. If Looks good, see. Helen. Yep. We're seeing your business analyst web interface there. Okay. I got to, I have to move the zoom stuff kind of out of the way because I can see that. Perfect. Um, so when you first actually, you can actually go into ArcGIS online to, um, to actually go into our application as well. So I'm sure you're you're more familiar with just getting into ArcGIS Online and then signing in this way. And then the first thing that I do is you can actually go to the app launcher itself, which is, I'm sure you're familiar with this, this interface. So I usually go to the app launcher and then you can launch business analysts this way. And then once you're, you're here, the first page that you see is the home page. And then um, the first thing that you would do is create a new project here. And projects are a way for you to actually, it's a folder in which you can group all your layers together. So if I, if I had multiple projects, for instance, this demo or another demo or an internal project that I'm working on by myself, then I would create a new project. So all of the layers are saved in that particular project. But the majority of the time you'll be in this maps uh, main navigation. And this is where you do all your analysis and add data. And the, one of the simplest ways of doing this is, um, for instance, we have this neat, neat tool called guided tours under our profile. And here you can actually learn all the basic, basics of our application directly in the application. And for, for instance, you know, it starts out with the very basic, how to create a project, taking a tour of the app um, so you can get oriented. But um, so I'll probably be going through the first orientation. So you have the home tab, as I mentioned, you have the maps tab, and then you have the reports tab, which is where you'll be creating your infographics and reports and then customizing them. Um, the application is very customizable. You can add your own logos, um, your own, you can even change out the colors um, from preferences. So the first thing that I would see, I would say for an introductory um, person to do is um, let's pretend that I am a policy student and I wanted to see um, where, where, what is the basic demographics of an area. And because I'm gonna kind of focus on coronavirus, I, I'm choosing El Paso County as a study case because I know that I have family there and I know that the numbers are really high so I'm going to first go into um, define areas and then select geography. And I think um, I'm going to go to select from full list. So I'm going to select county because I'm looking for El Paso. I'm going to type in Texas. And then I'm going to go to scroll down to El Paso. So I'm going to click done there. So as soon as you create a layer, um, select a standard geography or actually any any layer, you can immediately go into infographics. And the, the beauty of Business Analyst is that it comes with not only all the data, but actually it comes with about um, 17 standard infographics. So you can select from 
any of them here, as well as um, about a total of 50 because you can add about 36 additional ones here. And the, the very um, cool thing about this is that not only can you interact with the data, you can filter to dive deeper. You can actually share this with your stakeholders so they can dive deeper into the data and see, see the things that they want to see. And then you can actually compare against the, the country or your, your state so that you understand what this actually means. And all of this can be exported or printed. Um, another thing that I like to do is I also like to add additional sites for comparison. So let's say you wanted to compare um, this against another area, then I can actually select another area and then um, do a feature called side-by-side -side comparison. And what it actually does is it uses uh, one of the sites as a benchmark to search to show you the difference between the two sites. So I'm going to just scroll. So it basically shows you um, what is the difference between the new site against the county. Um, so it's, it's good when you're actually comparing you know, two sites to see what the differences are. And then if you, I won't go into the edit mode because it that deserves another um, a dedicated session by itself because it's very feature rich, but you definitely can go into each of these and edit out the variables or the text um, to personalize it to fit your business needs. Um, so I'm going to exit out of there. I'm just going to show that you can export these and it as HTMLs and share it and it maintains all of the click throughs and interactivity. Another thing that I wanted to show you is um, the fact that you can actually point to a location and just create um, a drive drive by time. So I'm going to click to a point location and then select, you know, you can do walk time or drive time and then just apply and then also get infographics or reports from there. We are also very rich in the term, the amount of reports that we provide. So for instance, um, once I run this report, it's actually going to, these are all standard ones. You can create your custom ones as well, but they, they come with all of the data that, that you know, you're looking for if you were interested in a community. Another thing that I think a lot of people are interested in seeing is um, the ability to add data. So this sidebar allows, gives you some tools for you to you know, zoom in, zoom out, and then lets you select the scale at which you wanted to focus on, as well as um, changing out the base map. For now, I'm gonna use this side, this little tool to clear out my map for now. So I'm gonna take out this um, drive drive time that I did just created. I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit to take a look at the entire area. I'm gonna adjust the transparency of my map so I can look at the data that I'm adding more clearly. If you were to, if you wanted to take a look at um, maybe the age of the population, for instance, if I were a policy student who wanted to look at what, um, what is, where are the elderly population? I can actually launch color-coded maps from create maps. In fact, I'm actually going to show you how it's done from our guided tour. This is a created color-coded map from data. So I'm gonna launch it. And the cool thing about the guided tours is that it shows you exactly where to go. So at any point you feel lost, you can just launch this from your profile to kind of you know just step through each of the um, each of the flows. So I'm going to type in senior, and this actually launches our entire um, data browser. So this is all of the categories of data. If you were to click show all, then you can see you know all of the data that we that comes with this application. Um, and it, it it's very it's about fifteen thousand variables. So you you can have you have data set for instance, you know, who ate yogurt in the past 30 days. Um, there's a, lot, a ton of data in there. But for this demo, I'm just gonna focus on, you know, senior population age 65 and over. 
And then um, this uh, here it's noting that he checked the legend tab for your color coded map and click next. And then also you can select the geography that you, if you want to zoom out to um, zip levels or states, you can select that there. And then you can even zoom in further to see block groups as well. I'm actually going to limit to the boundary that I've selected, which was El Paso County. And then continue on with this. You can um, select the colors. Um, if you wanted a blue or any other color that you, you wanted to check. And then actually, if you just wanted to focus on specific data, you can actually use this filter to dive down into the census census tracks that you only wanted to focus on. You can actually change the color as well. There's a lot of um, different um, styles. For instance, I'll show you by variate. Um, I'm actually going to add poverty layer to this. So I'm going to check poverty status, households below poverty level, so that I can show you by variate. And you can also actually change the color as well. I do um, pink and blue. It's, it's easier to see. Click the data tab. So this actually shows you all of the data by each of the census tracts, and you can export it if you wanted to dive deeper into the details. Okay. And then there you go. You you've done this this flow. Um, you can do this all by yourself, and you don't even need to you know, go externally to our help documentation, you can do, there's about 12 tutorials on it and it covers most of the tools that we currently provide, at least the basic tools. So here you can see that, you know, the purple areas basically denote the areas where poverty, um, poverty and the number of senior population overlap. Then you can toggle, you know, if you wanted to use the 2025 projection, you can do that as well or if you wanted to use percentage. Um, another information that um, I also find useful is the ability to search uh, filter by specific um, data. So I sometimes use the create map smart map search to actually go into, um, to be able to filter by specific data. For instance, let's say I was using, um, I wanted to focus on people who didn't have access to automobiles. So I'm just gonna type in vehicles. So let's see, owner household, or I'll, I'll do renter households with no vehicles. So here, if I just wanted to focus on El Paso County, first of all, and then let's say I want to focus on um, block groups, I can actually filter to see which areas, which areas um, meet the criteria that I'm looking for. So you can actually focus on uh, the number of households, uh, census tracts with um, higher number of households where the, there are renters without vehicles, if you wanted to target that population. So smart maps is cool. It's, it's very useful because um, I can actually target the sites and then, and then as a map, you can actually share this with your ArcGIS online through your organization or um, uh, create a PDF or an image that you can export out of here. And you can also view the results as a table that you can um, export to Excel for further analysis. So um, another tool that I wanted to emphasize during this demo is what we, what we call site suitability analysis. And it's under run analysis. And this helps you see, um, add uh, different data to see which site actually meets the categories that I want so that it helps you rank the sites. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually going to look for, let's pretend that um, we're trying to launch a mobile clinic for vaccine distribution. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go into create maps and go into businesses and facility search. And I'm actually going to look for um, healthcare category and housing. So most likely the, the phase one or two will probably focus on um, our frontline workers in terms of vaccine distribution. 
and then later they'll probably focus, you know, pharmacies and even you know, medical medical facilities. But then I think thirdly, we'll, we'll probably like target areas where um, people live too far away from these facilities and we'll need to take a mobile facility out there. So I'm just gonna search for hospitals and other locations and I'm gonna target areas that are farthest away from these locations. So once I have these sites, see, I'm gonna make the symbols a little bit larger so I can actually see it. And I'm gonna not cluster the points. And then here I can actually save it as a layer so that I can use it for site suitability. I'm gonna save this as a layer. So once I've done that, I know the points where these facilities are, and most likely those facilities um, will be serviced with vaccines. Or, but then for mobile clinics, I want to target people who are living farther away from here. They probably can't get to it as, as fast. So I'm going to look use suitability analysis. And I've actually created uh, several sites in this area that I'm going to use. So let's pretend that um, you, you are already considering some sites that have you know, sufficient parking for people to gather. But you want to focus on sites that have, you know, that are the closest to um, maybe elderly population. So I'm just gonna add again. I'm gonna find the senior, senior data, age dependency, and then maybe I also want to focus on people who who don't have access to vehicles. I'm gonna do vehicles available, and then I'm also going to focus on. Um, Maybe I have a program where um, I'm also going to be focused focused on people who are uh, maybe need additional language support. So I'm going to focus on where are the people who need um, you know, language support. I'm going to focus on Spanish. So let's apply those. And then lastly, I'm going to add the criteria of the point layer that I had just created. I'm going to use it um, all of the sites that I had added before, but. I'm going to double check that this is um, inversely related, meaning I'm actually going to rank the sites higher if they are farther from these sites, whereas the other ones I'm positively um, related. So here, I'm just going to show the locations only. It's, it's um, now my system is ranking all the sites where, um, where that's like the that's the closest to what I'm looking for. So the sites with the highest concentration of senior populations, the highest number of owners without owners and renters without vehicles, and then also um, concentration of people who are not speaking Spanish. I probably should have selected age 65 and above. Um, and then the areas that are the farthest from this from these emergency and medical facilities are ranked higher. And then um, the last thing I wanted to show you was that you can actually change the weight of these. For instance, if, if the number of senior population matters more to you, then you can change the weight and the other variables will adjust accordingly. And you, um, you'll see the ranking of the site. So, I don't know why this is working, not working right now, but um, usually it's uh, the sites will actually uh, light up a little bit more. So right now the winning site is site six. Um, this way you will know if you have two dispatches of mobile clinics that you can focus on site six and site five, for instance. So once you have these sites, and let's say you wanted to share the results with your stakeholders, I'll be showing you how to share these results. So I'm going to go into, um, I want to launch a story, which is a, basically a website that can host um, some of your content. So I'm going to actually launch story map. And one of my favorite um, templates is called Cascade. I'm going to actually add sites to it. So let's say I'm adding um, sites six and five. And then you get to choose um, whether you want to um, expose the site attributes or any site photos. At this time, I don't have any, but I will be adding infographics. 
So I'm going to add, um, let me see. I'm going to add some maybe healthcare and insurance statistics. And then I'm going to click next and then add title, El Paso sites. And then you can choose to share it with your organization and then click I'm done. It's going to take about 30 seconds for it to generate a site, but I actually created one for you. Um, um, I did one for El Paso County uh, for corona uh, coronavirus vaccination, vaccine distribution. Let me just refresh this for a second. So, you know, within, within seconds, you can actually create a website and this is, you know, you can make it private or public, share with your coworkers or your class. And then it, the interactivity is um, always all intact so that people can go in and your readers can go in and filter the data. Um, so it's just really easy to share. And, and you know, once you, once you have this site created, we actually have integrations with Unsplash and other sites, Flickr and others. So you can actually choose your own sites. I mean, you can choose your own um, visuals. And these are all from Creative Commons. And you, you can search for, it, it has a lot of content that you can link to. I think the one last thing that I wanted to show was, um, I know that some of you use ArcGIS Online. So I just wanted to show you that you can actually, for instance, if I had created a color coded map previously, let me just hide all of this. Once you create a color coded map, you should be able to see it right here. So you can always go to your projects panel to retrieve any of the layers that you have already created or any of the boundaries that you, you currently have. And I'll go into um, to share with ArcGIS Online. So I'll just say um, test share layer and then make sure that the layer that you wanna share is checked. And then I'll do the same thing here, test share layer, okay. So once you share this, you can actually go into, just let me try that one more time. <laughs> Sometimes this happens, it just airs out. So once I share that, it, it'll show up on your ArcGIS online contents um, under um, BA, like BA maps so that you can actually view that through your viewer or use it inside ArcGIS Online. And, and Helen, while you're pulling that up, uh, I just wanted to just put a fine point on what you're saying here to, to, so that it's not missed. You know, this is, this is all part of the same ArcGIS platform, folks. So the nice thing is that you can move data from, you know, ArcGIS Online into Business Analyst Web and like Helen's showing backwards as well. So let's say you've got this, Oh, who buys lottery tickets, who commutes to work by bicycle, who exercises three times or more a week, et cetera. You, you don't have that maybe in ArcGIS Online, but you can, you can get it in Business Analyst Web and then you can move it over. I, I just think that's, that's wonderful. So you're not using you know, these tools that, were, that don't talk to each other. You're using tools that are all part of the platform, which, okay, let me just have a moment. I think it's wonderful. So I think um, another good thing about demos is that you can find like bugs, little bugs, sometimes when you're demoing. So I think I may have found a little bug, but let me try this one last time. I do have a layer that I had already tested previously. Okay, so um, it's not, it's currently bugging out, but you can actually go into um, ArcGIS Online and then and then um, look for the content in there. So you, you can go into content, and then actually under BA My Maps, you can actually see your specific site. So I had actually created this El Paso sites, um, I'm sorry, total, total households by zip code area. So it'll be saved as a feature layer under here. And then you can actually open that up in Viewer and then um, you know work further into it in ArcGIS Online if you wanted to. I think that wraps up my demo. So um, I'm just going to share with you our, our resources page. Um, and it basically has all of our, how to contact us as well as, um, let me just swap this up for a second. 
Um, Helen, can you talk a little bit about the different version of the RQS um, uh, business analyst, please? I think we have a oh, question yeah, on, the, sure. on the desktop as well. By different versions, you mean, um, so currently we have the, the web and the desktop. Right. So yeah. we actually have, are you able to see my screen right now? Yes. Yep. Okay. So we have a mobile application that actually comes with our web application. And then we have the web application and then we have our desktop application and that currently comes with um, on-premises data as well as access as accessing our data and geo enrichment services through um, your login and ArcGIS online. Um, so the package is that we have this, which is the web app bundle mm -hmm. um, that comes with the cre credits as well as a creator user license in ArcGIS online. Mm -hmm. And then you have this package, which is the entire thing in the US that is, um, it comes with the pro um, extension to pro, our web application, mobile app, and then on-premises data. So that you, you on-premises data, the benefit of it is that you don't incur credits when you're using it. So you can use, uh, you know, you can use as much data as you want. And the beauty of this everyone is this is all included in university uh, license agreement. So you can use the easiest one is the web because the data is hosted on the web. You can just use it and um, don't worry about the credits. It does use some credits, but you can always contact with us on that if you run out the credit. Uh, but the desktop one is nice because um, you use it on the premise, but uh, as Sifa said in the, in the chat, managing 70, 80 gigabyte of business analyst data is a bit of pain as well on the desktop but maybe your university has a server to host that data so the students then can just connect to that server okay. yeah and don't forget you can you can sign in through ArcGIS online even on the extension to pro our native desktop application mm -hmm. and just use our online data as well oh nice and you don't use the credit for that then no you you do you do, you do. okay you do, yeah. <laughs> okay all right hey helen here's another one um one of our colleagues here on the chat is asking, hey, you know, what if I did want to export some of the data there? Mm -hmm. uh, shapefile, I know you can export an Excel spreadsheet out of results, I've done that, but what about like a shapefile or a, or a geodatabase or a feature class or something like that? Is, is there a way to, to get it out of uh, the cloud into some sort of a, uh, you know, a file or set of files on my own device? You know, if you're using um, our web app, you can share it through ArcGIS online. Right now, we don't have um, the ability to share out as a file, um, as like other other formats other than PDFs at this time. Um, mm -hmm. It's we also work with third-party data, so it's it's not just our data. That I think our there are limitations in how we use the data as well. So other than the exports that we currently provide. It's usually for, you know, using within the Esri ecosystem. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, if someone wanted to have some local files, I have exported using the uh, Excel uh, export yep. in the past, and that's, that's great. Thanks. Okay, super. Hey, Helen, there is a question. How about the business analyst server with enterprise to host the data? That's uh, yeah. Peter say. That's a good idea. Yeah. So... Um, as I, as I showed previously on the screens, mm -hmm. um, you can, and actually that, that's a great idea if you wanted to host the on-premises data mm -hmm. in your server or through our RGS online, RGS enterprise, mm -hmm. so that you can just, um, everybody has access to the same data. And a lot of the times um, our clients use it so that they can also integrate with their um, own set of custom data or create you know custom apps um, that that seamlessly integrate with their their business needs. Yeah. And there is another question in here, Helen. How about this business analyst compared to community analysts? Yeah, so there, as of right now, aside from the name and the color that it, the default color that it comes with, there really isn't a, any difference. Um, the the only only difference is that it doesn't come with the mobile application. And we don't have a bundle. Um, we don't have a bundle package for it. And then in the long run, we are we are I think considering um, 
you know, moving those clients into business analysts. So I would actually highly promote business analysts. There really isn't a difference in terms of functionality. Awesome. Good. Okay, um, there is another question in here. Um, our university has uh, from Chen Wu, our university have just desktop and pro license. Do we need business analyst license to use business analyst web app? Yes, you do. Enable it as a username that you, the, the ArcGIS Online administrator need to do that in uh, ArcGIS Online. Mm -hmm. And uh, mostly I always recommend it all ArcGIS Online administrator to just enable give all the license uh, to the name user, including business analyst as well. So yes. it's through ArcGIS Online. Um, so Rainer have a question in here. Online has greatly reduced analytic capability uh, compared with desktop, I guess. Is there any plan to increase the capabilities for the web one? Alan? Yes, you're absolutely right. So our vision is to, um, continue to add more analytic tools so that in the future you'll have, um, you'll be able to use them interchangeably. Also, I would just add that, uh, you know, on Rainer's point, uh, just as an example earlier this year, when the, I'm thinking it's this year, this year has been a long year, <laughs> right <laughs> folks? But anyway, having the ability now to do things like standard deviational ellipse and um, a mean center inside ArcGIS Online. That's just another set of tools that you know, you've formerly had to go to pro to do, and now you can do it with ArcGIS Online. So yeah, there is a, there is a gradual increase uh, over time in both in pro and online and business analyst web on the analytic capabilities. So this is one of those reasons why we always say to educators, you know, keep your knees bent, right? The, the tools are evolving. They improve over time, they get easier to use and more powerful, which is double, doubly good news. Yes. Uh, Helen, there's a question from Peter here. Is there a way business analysts online to access past version of this business analyst data for the reproductibility um, purpose? Maybe sometimes yeah. you have this, you know, research that using the previous data. Yeah. So right now we, we don't support that as you know, um, it's actually a lot more effort because um, we do adjust all of the boundaries and all the data to to match those boundaries, and we don't currently have the a way a way for us to support um, multiple boundaries, you know, for all of our um, all of our data. But it is it is in our roadmap, and we are researching ways to actually accommodate that need because I, I can see year to year trends and why why that need is. What, what would people are asking for it? It will be easier for the on-premise one, I guess, for the the desktop one, right? Yeah, yeah. If you have, you can easily toggle back to you know the past years in the in the on-premise version, our native desktop. But um, right now, you can't in the web app. Okay, okay. Yeah. Jason has a question in here, like. What is the process for adding students to being able to use ArcGIS online or the bundle? Is if they get credits, do they just use it? Uh, I probably can answer this one. So um, Jason for ArcGIS online, I always, we always highly recommend to uh, you put the template in ArcGIS online setting for the for the new user. So there is a new user template. Just make sure that you use um, it to check all the license, including business analyst web on that. So every time you add a new user, it automatically get that license. And even better, if you can enable single sign-on in your un university, maybe um, connecting ArcGIS online with your university ID system. So anybody authenticated through your university ID is automatically become a user in ArcGIS online and get all the license. So it's almost hands off for the administrator there. Um, so let me know if you need more help on that topic. And you can also put a cap on individual users, right? If you do yes, so you can put a cap on the uh, uh, credit as well. And then um, they always um, can, uh, if they run out of credit, the administrator will be contacted. 
Joseph, is there any other question that we missed? You're covering the ones that I've seen. Uh, I just wanted to add while folks are thinking of additional questions here that it comes back to choosing the most appropriate tool for the job. When, when Rena and I and our colleagues on the education team work with schools of business, for example, this is what we lead with because it is within a few seconds, you're making choropleth maps with a wide variety of data, not just demographic data, but as Helen indicated, uh, all that consumer preference data and compet competitors. So if you're doing site uh, selection optimization, we've got some lessons on that. This is really so ideal, but I think beyond schools of business, if you're teaching a, a, a large number of other subjects, GI science, uh, human geography, environmental studies, et cetera, um, and you wanna make for multiple countries, remember, this isn't just for the US, but if you want to make quick choropleth maps and infographics and reports, this is, there's there's really no easier way to do it because you've got the data it, right inside the tool and the and the tools to, to, to combine the data with, with um, uh, the functionality. So within, again, literally less than a minute, you're, you're off and running with, wow, look at these patterns at multiple scales and it's just really grand. And again, it fits into the whole uh, platform as well. So uh, that's that's just a couple of things to share that, you know, based on what we've worked with, with faculty colleagues of yours over the past few years. And you can create story map right there from the business analyst web. Mm -hmm. That That is another hugely nice feature, I think. Yeah, um, I think I think you you hit the nail, um, you hit you hit it on the nail like the ability to have access so quickly to all the data i mean even if you could get all the public data yourself you don't need to massage it it's just there i mean you can i think people can get onboarded within six ten minutes um yeah and there's some really interesting tools inside business analyst web that have yet to migrate to some other uh, tools that we have. They're starting to, for example, in the new map viewer, there's there's some inkling of some of these tools migrating. But just to give an example, I know this sounds pretty geeky and nerdy, but hey, we're all in we're all in the you know the same wavelength here. But once you've got your results on your on your let's say a core pleth map, uh, Helen and her team have built this wonderful sort of sliding filter tool. And so if you slide that over, uh, it it reduces the it's, it's a visual as well as a sliding tool. So you see the number of whatever you're mapping reduce based on the filter. So in other words, you're not really building an expression, you're just sliding that filter tool and now you have only the, 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 the block groups where over, uh, let's say half the respondents in, or half the people in that census tract or block group own two or more dogs or two or more cats. You know, it's that kind of thing. It's just fascinating. And so you're quickly, you know, getting to the point where you're saying, wow, look at these patterns, relationships, and trends. Yeah, and another thing I think compared to just our um, ArcGIS Pro, for, for instance, you know, I think the ability for our, our new users, especially those without GIS background, to be able to pick up the application, even during testing, you know, is just significantly faster and it's less overwhelming. Right. Um, yeah. You don't yep. have to learn pro in order to just using business analysts. 